Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. And I'm glad that today we are together and we continue to look at the book of Revelation and in particular the horsemen. We continue then to look at the last two horsemen. The first one is famine, the black horse of famine. Eugene Peterson describes famine as nature out of balance. It's a time when necessities are scarce. Yet, people are dying in the presence of abundance. In a sense, famine is created by our greed, by those who have having too much and being unwilling to share with those who do not have. The rich do not go without. What is necessary for minimal basic living for all is unavailable. While the luxuries of life are abundant and greed is the cause People exploit the earth, leaving it depleted and poor in order that they might live well. The desire then being to achieve a materially high standard of living. And this striving for more and more materially is insanity. We put millions of people to work making machines that pollute the air we breathe so that we can move more rapidly from place to place at lethal speeds so that we have more time to stare at flickering screens which convince us that to be happy we must have more and more lethal machines. And so in essence, He's questioning the values that we have that give rise to an imbalance in resources in the world. And so he asks, what do we need? We do not need constant stimulation, poisoned food, carcinogenic air, or useless work. The rider on the black horse does his work, but the rider on the white horse, who is Christ, also does his. He is at work restoring the people to a balanced sanity. We are taught to live by grace and not by greed. Then he suggests that the rider on the pale horse, that is, sickness and death, that sickness is disguised by technology. The machine has become more important to us than the body. We atrophy our legs by being carried around by machines everywhere. We drug our minds losing them with narcotics and stimulants in appalling quantities. We face anxiety and stress as we adapt to the faster and faster pace of technology. We accept the myth that the most important thing to do with our bodies is to put them to work for money and to achieve reputation, which only increases sickness. One of the most conspicuous features of Christ's ministry was healing. And the final healing comes in the resurrection. And so he sees famine and sickness as part of the evils of our society of a society that is turned away from God. 
that are serving another. So Christ is the conqueror of these evils. Christ comes to restore the balance, to restore Christ-likeness, to restore the desire and the hunger for God. Now, Revelation 6 ends with a question that must be answered, although we do not really expect an answer. And the question is, who can stand? And why, of course, no one can stand, or so we may think. Who can possibly stand in the face of these horsemen who bring such despair and destruction? But the answer we get is actually quite surprising. The angels can stand. They are not intimidated by the evil horsemen. They stand. Then in Revelation 7 and verse 9, we read that a multitude stands. A multitude which no man can number stands. And Revelation shows this to be Christians. And this is a surprise. For Christians are a small minority at the time, certainly they were a small minority, who had been decimated by war, famine, persecution and catastrophe. Who can stand in this world of evil? Who can stand? Christians can stand. The Christians are secure and exuberant. Christians sing. They sing in all conditions, whether they be good or bad. All evil is weak before the songs of joy that are found in the Christian heart. Evil exists, but it is contained. It is not minimized, but it is put into a place bracketed between Christ and prayer. Nowhere in Scripture is there any attempt to answer the question, why does God permit evil? Evil is simply a fact. But all evil is bounded by Christ and prayer. Evil is not explained. It is surrounded. It is held and contained. We can admit the presence of evil in the world, but we do not need to fear it. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You and I and the rest of the body of Christ have already triumphed over evil. We need not fear it. You need not fear it. And so as you go out today, as you go about your business, Hold that deep in your heart. You have already overcome evil. You need not be afraid. May you be blessed and may you be held today. Amen.